Hi everyone, thanks for connecting with me today. I appreciate you giving me a few minutes of your time. So uh, if you've been tracking with us in the last few weeks, you know that we're on week four, I think this is, of our Beautiful One series. And uh, we've been talking about this question of why is Jesus uh, both the most compelling person and also sometimes the most divisive person in history? And we've explored this question from different angles. And today we're going to explore a question that um, I think is, um, is very hard for many people uh, to wrap their head around. We'll, just, we'll, we'll put it that way. Uh, so uh, we know that as followers of Jesus, that Jesus, uh, that, that being, let me put it this way. We know that being a follower of Jesus is not just an intellectual thing although our intellect is certainly involved in our decisions and uh, you know, studying the word, but it's not just an intellectual thing. We know that being a follower of Jesus is not just uh, an emotional thing, although our emotions certainly are, are involved when we learn to love Jesus more. We know that being a follower of Jesus also is not just a social thing, although social and relationships is part of it, right? Being part of a, a church community, the family of God. But being a follower of Jesus is not just an intellectual, emotional, social thing. Being a follower of Jesus is a spiritual miracle. It's a mystery. It's a mystery how our spirit comes alive to the divine and we receive this um, you know we talk about spiritual revelation or enlightenment it's an absolute mystery how that happens in a person's life and so for many people they might 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 look at this experience and say well like i just don't get it i don't understand it can you explain it for me and it's very difficult to explain you know what it means for um for you to, to for your spirit to come alive right to to the presence of god it's a very difficult thing to explain spiritual enlightenment there are no graphs there's no diagram there's no like easy one two three way to explain it and, and, and so for some people, um, this might be a difficult thing for them to wrap their head around. And therefore it might be that the same thing that is beautiful and compelling for us followers of Jesus, it might be divisive for some people because they just don't understand it, right? Well, today we're gonna look at John chapter three in a story of Nicodemus that was wrestling with this exact same question. In John chapter three, verse one, let's begin reading the story. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Let me just pause there for a moment and say that um, there obviously was something happening in Nicodemus. He was spiritually curious. He, he was drawn to Jesus. You know, he said, we all know that God has sent you and, and he pointed to Jesus's miraculous signs as evidence. And, uh, and so Jesus responded to Nicodemus's um, step towards him. Jesus responded by inviting him to go to the next step. Let's read in verse three. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus, like, well, what do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. And the word Jesus used there is pneuma. Be, no one can be uh, the kingdom of God without being born of water and pneuma. Humans can reproduce only human life but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. That's a key statement. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So Jesus went on to say, don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind, and there's this word again, pneuma, the wind, the pneuma blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. You see, what Nicodemus was wrestling with 
was he was trying to understand in a tangible way to explain to me how this all happens, how you can be born again. And Jesus responded by trying to explain in a spiritual way. It's the difference between the mystery of spiritual enlightenment and tangible thing, right? And I think that many people can relate to this today. I think that many people here, you know, us followers of Jesus talk about being a follower of Jesus and spiritual enlightenment. And they're just like, uh, like, I, I just don't get it. it. It just doesn't make sense to me. And, and um, we're, we're, we talk about a spiritual miracle, but, you know, many people talk about, um, talk on a tangible level, right? And so Jesus tried to explain using the, an, an illustration of the wind in verse 8. The wind, or pneuma, blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. We don't know how the pneuma blows or how the Spirit moves. We don't know how the Spirit moves, but when it does, we sure do feel its effects, don't we? Just like the wind, just like that the, when the Spirit, when, when the pneuma moves, we sure do feel it, you know, on the inside, right? And again, it's hard to put into words. It's hard to put in a diagram, you know, what it means and, and what it is to experience spiritual enlightenment. Um, and so uh, Nicodemus uh, in verse 9, right after that little section in verse 9, he asks the obvious question that everybody asks. In verse 9, he said, how are these things possible? right? So, you know, Jesus, you're talking about being born again. You're talking about the wind blowing, the spirit moving, and, you know, and this being, you know, something that, that I can experience. How is that even possible, right? In verse 9, Nic Nicodemus asked the question, and then uh, Jesus said a few things after that, and I think that Jesus gave the answer to Nicodemus's question in verses 14 to 17. Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Speaking of his crucifixion, must be lifted up and, and, and crucified on the cross. So the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. And then Jesus went on to the famous verse, John three sixteen. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Okay, so you're tracking with the conversation. Nicodemus says, hey, Jesus, you're a really cool guy. I, there's something about you that I'm, I'm intrigued in. And Jesus responds uh, by saying, you must be born again. You must be born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus is like, what does that even mean? And verse 9, how is that possible? And Jesus answered the question with two things, and both of those things have a common denominator. In verse uh, 14 or 15, it's talked about that Jesus, that the Son of Man, referring to himself, must be lifted up. So how is it possible to have new life in Jesus, to be born again? It happens only by the death of Jesus. But look at, the, look at what he says. The Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him, everyone who believes in him, there's the key right there. And then Jesus says, Jesus answered by saying, it's only possible by, by me giving my life on the cross. And then verse 16, it's also only possible because of the love of the Father. This is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone, listen again, so that everyone who believes, right? So Jesus answered the question, how is this possible? First, he said that Jesus, might meet, the Son of Man, must be lifted up, must die on the cross, and you must believe. Second, he said, it's only possible because of the love of the Father who gave his Son, and you must believe, right? So on Sunday when we gather, um, we're going to talk about this issue of belief, because this, the, 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 this issue of belief, again, is a little abstract. 
And I'm going to ask the question, if you were trying to explain to somebody, you know, who is trying to kind of understand this whole thing, how would you understand, or, or sorry, how would you explain what it means to believe? How would you define belief? What does it mean for you to believe? Okay, we'll talk about that. And um, yeah, yeah. Let me finish by, by uh, saying something or talking about something. In our, in our uh, church community, um, I see a, a preferred pathway for a person to explore who Jesus is and to take a step of faith to be all in on Jesus and receive this spiritual enlightenment. I see a preferred pathway for that to happen. So, um, so, so we begin with love and acceptance and friendship, right? So let's say a, a, a friend of mine uh, is not a follower of Jesus. Maybe they're, maybe they're spiritually open, maybe they're not. Uh, their pathway begins with my love and acceptance, unconditional love and unconditional acceptance. I'm just their friend, period. Not for any ulterior motives, I'm just their friend, right? And hopefully as my friends um, are exposed to me sharing of my life, hopefully there will be something that kind of catches in their heart, right? Or, or some kind of curiosity, and they'll be curious about Jesus. And when that happens, then we invite people to begin to explore Jesus. We, we, um, when that spiritual curiosity kind of starts to, to burn, then we invite people to explore, get to know, and, and in fact, in time, fall in love with Jesus, right? And I, but, but at the end of that road is spiritual enlightenment. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. It's not enough to, to be friends and to kind of explore who Jesus is and learn about Jesus and then stay at that intellectual kind of level. No, being a follower of Jesus means spiritual enlightenment. It means that our spirit comes alive to the divine, right? At the end of our uh, spiritual pathway is spiritual enlightenment. And that spiritual enlightenment is not a one-time thing where like, you know, for me, like years ago when I became a follower of Jesus and my spirit came alive and that was that day and that's where it stopped. No, it's a, it's a journey. It's a lifelong journey of spiritual enlightenment, right? So my point is that we are all about helping people um, experience spiritual enlightenment. Uh, helping people experience what it means for their for their spirit to come alive to the divine, right? And so, <clears throat> and and that's exactly what Jesus was saying, and this is exactly um, what he talked about with Nicodemus when he said in verse five, "Humans can reproduce only human life, but listen, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. The Holy Spirit, the pneuma." gives birth to spiritual life. So again, on, um, on Sunday when we gather, we'll have a conversation about, you know, what does that mean? If you're trying to explain to somebody, you know, what it means to receive spiritual enlightenment, what does it mean? How could, how could you explain to somebody what it means to uh, come alive, your spirit? Like if you were Jesus and Nicodemus, how would you explain it, right? So that'll be a good conversation for Sunday. Uh, and then also, like I said before, we'll also talk about this uh, question of belief. How, how do you define belief? How would you explain, you know, belief to somebody who, um, who doesn't understand, okay? So tons of stuff that we can talk about. Look forward, if we can, uh, I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Uh, we'll gather at Latcham Hall. Food will be served at 10. At about 10.15 or so, we'll, we'll sit down and just chat about our weeks. Uh, where did we see God at work this week? And then about 10.30, roughly, we'll, we'll slip into worship. And then, of course, you know, have this teaching and have a conversation about it, okay? So look forward, if we can, to seeing you on Sunday. God bless you, friends. Have a fantastic day.